As a classical British liberal, I believe in meritocracy over any type of identity politics and collectivism, because ultimately the achievements of the individual should be put over any type of collectivist action, in my opinion. And as a man who studied a science, I do know the type of tactics that the gender ideologues have so far tried to push to try and get women in. Uh, most of it is pretty, fairly liberal to be fair, it's just showing and encouraging women to go into the fields by saying women can do it, don't you worry about it if you feel like it, you know, encouraging them and then having women in science days, things like that, which I'm, I don't agree with their reasons for doing it because they just want a 50 50 split for an arbitrary reason which is that there is no reason but you know it's nothing illiberal so far but uh <laughs> when someone at cern comes out and does a james damore that's where shit apparently gets serious so we may as well jump right into it cern scientist alessandro strumier suspended after comments <laughs> it had a better title earlier today but i'll just go into the article a senior scientist who said physics was invented and built by men has been suspended with immediate effect from working with CERN. So this is the BBC, so take that quote with a pinch of salt. Professor Alessandro Stromia of Pisa University made the comments during a presentation organised by the European Nuclear Research Centre. CERN issued a statement on Monday suspending Professor Stromia pending an investigation. It stated that his presentation was unacceptable. Now, you're probably wondering what was in this presentation. Well, the BBC article actually goes into a bit of detail about it. CERN always strives to carry out its scientific mission in a peaceful and inclusive environment, the statement reads, calling the presentation contrary to the CERN code of conduct. The organisation said it was unfortunate the views of the scientist who works at a collaborating university risks overshadowing the important message and achievements of the event. Professor Strumia, who regularly works at CERN, was speaking at a workshop in Geneva on gender and a high energy physics. I don't understand the why, how they are related in any way. Why is there a workshop on gender and high energy physics? Why can't it just be a workshop on high energy physics? This is what science is supposed to be about, people. What is going on? He told his audience of young, predominantly female physicists that his results proved that physics is not sexist against women. However, the truth does not matter because it is part of a political battle coming from outside. <laughs> Holy shit, that's woke. He produced a series of graphs which he claimed showed that women were hired over men whose research was cited more by other scientists in their publications, which is an indication of higher quality, which is generally true. He also presented data that he claimed showed that male and female researchers were equally cited at the start of their careers, but men scored progressively better as their careers progressed, which I'm sure is true. And he actually has the graphs for it, but I'm going to show them a bit later. When the BBC contacted Professor Strumia, he said, People say that physics is sexist, physics is racist. I made some simple checks and discovered that it wasn't. That it was becoming sexist against men and said so. Which, I don't know about you, but this article hasn't actually mentioned yet that he was more qualified for a job that a woman that was less qualified got. But I don't know if he mentioned it further, but it mentioned it earlier today. Anyway, I'll carry on. Last month, Professor Joycelyn Bell Burnell told the BBC she believed that unconscious bias against women prevented them from getting jobs in physics and research, which that link actually takes you just to another BBC article with absolutely no sources other than her asserting that she believes there is unconscious bias. Whereas the article I'm reading currently actually sources the, guy, the sexist man's own slides. And I, as I said, I'm going to go through them later because there's nothing wrong with them. And a major study published in 2012 in the US scientific journal PNAS showed that science faculty members rated identical job applications more highly when presented to them with a male name rather than a female name. Oh, so there's a source then. Let's have a quick look. Having a quick look through the method of it, I, I can't actually see that much wrong with it. Basically, they gave people two, two identical, you know, CVs for a managerial position at a laboratory, one with a male name, one with a female name a female name that had <laughs> equivalent likability and recognizability so basically they chose as the identitarians would put white names like john and jennifer and then they basically apply any type of difference in salary and hireability and whatever purely down to sexism which i don't think is right 
because anyone can be feeling anything at any time of the day. Uh, so I don't know why would they would just infer that's directly sexism instead of just asking why aren't they hiring these people. But, you know, I'm not a fucking Yale <laughs> professor, so they obviously know it better than I do. So I'm going to take their word for it and say, OK, this study did show that women are discriminated against. Anyway, the BBC then nicely puts a couple of tweets in from female scientists that are whinging and then finishes with, in 2015, Nobel Laureate, I don't know how to say that, Professor Tim Hunt resigned from his position at University College London after telling an audience, I'm sorry, I'm going to correct that for them, joking to an audience of young female scientists at a conference in South Korea that the trouble with girls in labs was that when you criticise them, they cry. Well, <laughs> they're proving that point, aren't they? As I said, though, I will go through some of the slides on the gentleman's presentation. So he starts off with a mainstream theory, which is basically a bog standard progressive theory that all women share the same kind of sad and unfair experiences since the beginning of their scientific career. Mansplaining, gaslighting and white male hetero privilege, sexual harassment at epidemic levels, microaggressions, men mobilizing their masculinity, supporting men in ways that advance careers, basically that uh, is male dominated because of the patriarchy. And then he moves on to the conservative theory, which is generally just people who aren't insane theories, that physics is a community of interest, optimised to understand nature, physics does not depend on nation, race, sex. Basically, it's there for the notion of merit, and not many people have the merit it takes to get to the highest end of the scientific community, which generally is true. So you've basically got post-modern neo-Marxist theory versus, they say conservative theory, and I guess that's good enough, but it, it is liberal theory as well, to be fair. I do want to mention as well that in pretty much all of his slides, he has got links to sources that are to scientific journals, most of them anyway. So he has sourced the absolute crap out of this and done his research. So I'll obviously link this in the description if you want to look through yourself, but this is something else, man. He then goes on to explain the predictions of both these theories. So both theories have unpleasant implications. Usually we don't care why physicists are not distributed uniformly which is exactly the way you should be thinking if you are anyway caring about merit. But now we have gender conferences. As you can probably tell, the guy doesn't have English as his first language. So earlier when he said physics was built and um, whatever by men, uh, what <laughs> the full quote of that is actually, it wasn't done by invitation. So I think what he was actually trying to say there was that it was built by merit of predominantly men, because it was predominantly men, but he's not saying that women are generally shite at science because he probably knows about Marie Curie, who was a good French physicist. But anyway, he says the Marxist theory is discrimination against women in citations, conferences and hirings. There's more gender equality, gives more women in STEM and the less women, the closer to power and where merit is more subjective. So if you need to have that in proper English instead of this silly Italian English, what he's basically saying is that there's a patriarchy and that women are oppressed. He then obviously talks about the conservative theory, which takes interest, ability, which explains the observation that you see more men in it because they have more interest in it, which he goes into later, and that smart people are less affected by implicit bias and traps, which he goes on to generally talk about. So basically it means that there's a meritocracy generally. He has a quick slide explaining that there are less women in science and in CERN women are mainly in the admin positions than they're in the physicist positions and they are least likely to be in the technician positions. With a slide then explaining the gender paradox of Norway where generally the percentage of women in theory and STEM is negatively correlated with the gender equality index. So this is what Jordan Peterson says all the bloody time that basically when men and women are more free then they end up in more different areas of life. So you get more women in care homes and nursing, let's say, and you get more men in science and engineering. I love how he mentions at the bottom that this is the gender equality paradox. <laughs> he says, but only if you believe in the wrong theory, but I assume he means if you believe in what he called mainstream theory, then you wouldn't believe this, even though this is exactly what the evidence shows. His slides then just basically turn into a big huge hunk of data which i love so i'm going to go through some of them quickly because i don't want to bore you too much firstly it shows a fairly complicated graph 
that basically shows the gender asymmetry in citations and basically it seems to be leaning towards men and throughout the slide he's talking about percentages so i'm going to assume that that gender asymmetry in citations axis is in percentage so as you can see only twice does the asymmetry go above 0.1 percent but i would have to wait for the recorded video of this to come out but he's basically saying it right at the bottom there is no gender preference in citations in any category at any time down to the percentage level so that means that Males are cited slightly more than females, but if you put that in proportion, it's about equal between male and female. So he says it's merit, not sexism. I don't know what that Ed doesn't equal Rocco means, but I assume that is two theories that do not compute. Similar analysis applied to countries find instead significant asymmetries. So basically, say between the UK and Germany, there's more asymmetry than there is between men and women, which does indicate there isn't that much sexism. He next then shows two graphs that compare the number of citations with the number of authored journals. And it shows that at the year between 1980, there is a massive spike in the number of citations per authored article and <laughs> the amount of women hired. It's, it's quite a lot. But the rest of the time, as you can see from both graphs, generally women are hired with less citations per authored article. So he says at the bottom, on average, women hired with less citations, which generally, well, you can tell that from the graph. It's not by much, but he's basically saying that women are preferred, which I don't necessarily agree with there, because the number of citations isn't necessarily an indication of competence, but it depends what you do in the science, to be honest. His next slide is three graphs showing three different areas of physics, with the pink lines showing total number of women hired, and the dark purple one, which is basically the men filling that bit in. And as it generally shows in every single one, women are hired about a year earlier than men with similar bibliometric, which basically means number of citations, which again, you can't really put cit citations directly with competence, but it is a good indicator of it generally, but it's not everything you need to be shown to be competent. He then shows a quick graph showing that at the postdoctorate level, male and female number of citations per authored articles is about the same. But as you go up, men clearly take over women and that gap just keeps diverging. And he says at the bottom, smaller gap at postdoc level, some really difference restricting to hired, unhired. I don't really know what he's saying there, but I think he means that if you are a hired scientist or a unhired scientist, then the number of men and women with the number of citations per authored article is about the same which i i i would assume to be true as well he then pretty much badly sums up what he's trying to say in this next slide which is basically just titled discrimination against women physics invented and built by men it's not by invitation i think what he meant to say there was by people who earned it and they weren't just put on there for being women which he then says underneath Shuri and all those people who were women welcome and after showing what they can do and they got Nobels, Nobel Prizes for Chemistry and Physics. So he's basically saying, if you earn your way in, you will do well. You don't just get an invitation in for being a woman. He's just bad at English. Look at the rest of the slides, for God's sake. He then has a whole slide explaining the discrimination against men. Oxford University ex extends exam times for women's benefits, which I've gone through before. Italy, free or cheaper university STEM for female students, scholarships for women only, Melbourne U, STEM positions for women only, 2-1 faculty prefer preference for women on STEM tenure track. So basically he's going through a load of sources where it shows that men are explicitly discriminated against. This was his entire problem because he's a man who has suffered from this. So quite honestly, I can completely understand where he's coming from. Although he is a bit of an angry Italian man with a chip on his shoulder, personally I think he's done okay work here, for an angry man anyway. He then basically has a basic MRA slide here, which is actually quite funny, just because of how bad the English is. Quotist in best job only is not equality, so he's basically saying, if you had to work less to get the same job because you're on a quota, that is not equality, that is patronising, that I've said a million times before. Then as a picture of the first workshop on construction and gender equality, which is completely empty. And then he says at the bottom, men make worse jobs and 
95% of work deaths, which is true. Men make up the total bottom rung of society and no one gives a shit. <laughs> which is basically all that slide's trying to say, which is great. He then moves on to basic conservative theory, which he didn't have to go into as much explaining because it's so goddamn easy to understand and there is so much goddamn scientific backing behind it. So first off, interest. Past gender string conferences, talks by Gina Rippon, <laughs> 1,858 citations, a neurobiologist critical of neuro trash like Simon Baron Cohen, who has 157,000 citations, and Sasha Baron Cohen's cousin, oddly enough, who claim observation that men and women have different average interests, which is entirely true and shown in the Norwegian gender paradox. So he goes through a load of sources there explaining how men are interested in things and women are interested in caring and people, and how this is shown in pretty much every stage of life and even in our closest ancestors. It, he even says at the bottom, this may not be fully right, but to assume the opposite is to deny science, which I completely agree with. I also love how he says, good physicists don't follow role models. I just think that's so funny to me, because I think what he's basically trying to tell the girls there is that if you're going to follow anyone, follow your own goddamn intuition. Don't just follow those of others, because you might end up not liking it because you don't think you can make it because you're a man. At least that's what I, I think he's basically just trying to encourage them by making them their own goddamn woman. I don't know, I just found it funny. The absolute madman then puts a goddamn meme in his slide. It's the classic one of all the women looking at STEM fields and gender studies, signing up for gender studies, and then whinging that there's not many women in STEM. The absolute mad lad. He then goes through ability, where he explains that to be a physics graduate, you have to have a top IQ. It's required. He then goes through the bell curve theory that men have a similar IQ to women on average, but men are more spread out, which I don't know how well done the science is on this, but as far as I'm aware, there is some evidence to show it. So basically, men are the smartest people in the human race, but they are also the most retarded. So... You know, you get both ends of the stick with men, which generally is shown throughout human society, I'd say. Especially if you've got men right at the top of sciences, but also the only people doing bricklaying. But I don't want to say it's conclusive science because I know it isn't. But I think he's basically trying to say, not that men are more intelligent than women, just like, just that the most intelligent people are usually men. Which I don't think is sexist if it does have... have scientific evidence behind it, but I'm not as well read on this as I am with other parts of biology. He then has a quick slide explaining that people have been literally fired from their jobs for saying things like this, and that he says that people are trying to cut down on the, the, old, uh, the old science behind this. And then he says, but what's behind this? And then he goes into a slide saying that mainstream theory is cultural Marxism, or more specifically, postmodern neo-Marxism. Some politicians survived to 1989 promoting a victimocracy of minorities and silencing and silence who disagrees with that ideology. Equity degenerated in gender. And believe it or not, this is entirely true if you are looking at the world in any other objective way. The goal of this is to have more women in STEM and indoctrinate them into the ideology, which seems to be working. Their gender equality works because it's the usual sexism. Women and men in their traditional gender roles are victims and protectors or providers. It's actively victims and oppressors in Marxist, uh, neo-Marxist theory, I should say, but it's good enough, his English is shit. It's blind human biology practiced as in the plains of Africa thousands of years ago. <laughs> I kind of. <laughs> it said thought crime according to Minister of Truth and PC Thought Police. So he's basically saying, if you go against their indoctrination in any way, you are a thought criminal and get fired from your job. And I think him being suspended is the absolute proof of this. So I think he actually went down as a martyr, the absolute mad lad. His final slide then concludes, data consisted with standard model, no new S2 symmetry in nature. So I think he's basically trying to say there that men and women have always had this nature and it's not really changed with the new studies. Physics is not sexist against women, however, truth does not matter because it's part of a political battle coming from the outside. It is not clear who will win. And he's, that's pretty true, to be honest. But as a liberalist, I'm going to do my damn best to make sure his conservative theory wins because it's in line with the Enlightenment and scientific values. 
Postscriptum, many told me don't speak, it's dangerous. As a student, I wrote that weak scale S-U-S-Y is not right, and I survived. I hope to see you again. So basically he's spoken out about this before and survived, uh, but he tried his luck again and it didn't work out this time for him, unfortunately. So to summarise, if you speak out and try and put any type of biological or psychological science behind your backing that there isn't that much sexism or inherent sexism, or much sexism in the workplace, then you are gonna get fired for speaking the damn truth. And he even has goddamn evidence in his own his own slides about it. It's just crazy. The man called out every absolutely everything that James Damore called out in his Google manifesto, or whatever you want to call it. And man, this like this is exactly the same. This is just slides explaining actually what's happening. And because he said that, as he said above, it's thought crime and he's been taken over by the thought police. Uh, well, he got fired, didn't he? Or suspended anyway. So, you know what? Uh, you know what I say? Speak out the truth. I mean, if you... <laughs> I'm not saying be a hero, but, you know, I, I think the more people that speak out about this, the more they have to kind of take into account that <laughs> Mr. Baron Cohen, who has <laughs> just under 160,000 goddamn citations may have a point that men and women are different and that sexism isn't inherent in anything apart from nature but after having a good laugh at some of these slides and feeling bad for a good old suspended italian professor i have to leave it there because there's not much else to go through so thank you very much for listening and farewell <laughs>